Hey Busters, today we go out with a bang. You'll see how not to give a fuck and get promoted. That will surprise you at how effective it is and how it can get you that promotion and pay raise next time. You will also learn the counterintuitive reason why this very workplace you're in, the one that has betrayed you with that snub of being passed over is actually the best skill building playground you've ever had and how you can have a ball playing in it on your way to your future promotion and pay raise either there or elsewhere. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm the Boss Problem Buster, founder of the Pay Raise Commando. We train past over corporate professionals like you to get that pay raise or promotion you deserve so that you can finally kill your Monday blues and bring your inner joy back, which is the best part about my job and the goal of this channel. Kill your Monday blues and bring your inner joy back. So the number eight and last do what to do right after being passed over for promotion or pay raise or both is use this workplace as your practice ground. You've got nothing to lose and much to gain. Okay, first, some context. One of the th first things you've probably wanted to do right after being passed over is to say, F this place, quit and go elsewhere. What I'm here to tell you is that you can do all that. You can do just that, but without the quitting part, you would be an idiot to leave now. So we've come full circle with the first video in this snub stack as I call it. Check it out here and you'll see what I mean. On top of everything in that video, there's another reason why you should not quit right now. Note I'm only saying that for right now, which is the following. If you think changing your workplace will magically grant you that promotion or pay raise or both, you are gravely mistaken. You are about to be bitterly disappointed if you didn't get it because of the reasons for which most people don't get it. That is um, issues regarding your performance, um, poor understanding of office politics, which usually, usually stems from a poor understanding or even a total misunderstanding of how organi organizations operate and how bosses make decisions which, by the way, will be the very topics I'll cover in a huge new stack, new stack I'll be uploading next. So if these are the reasons you didn't get it, I guarantee the same thing will happen in your next workplace and the next one after that for all eternity. You need to let the following sink in. It's not them, it's you. The issue is always you and has been always you. And until you change, nothing will change in, regard, in regards to your promotion and or pay raise. Therefore, skipping from one place, one workplace to the next, just because of your bruised ego is counterproductive and will nine out of 10 times ruin your career. It's just like, it's very much like relationships. You, you can hop from one relationship to another and whenever something goes wrong, blame the other party. Surely they have some part of the blame, but what about you? If you've been dating all over the place only to find out each time how screwed your partner is, wondering how come you never get to meet a normal one then you need to zoom out and be honest about what's really going on here. And if you do, you will come to acknowledge that the only common denominator in all those failed relationships is you. So before you hop on to the next relationship, all along thinking all women are nuts, or all men are nuts, depending on whom you're dating, you better stay single for a while to figure yourself out. And then, if you're still interested in a relationship, you'll find out the women or men have miraculously become easier to get along with. Hmm, imagine that. What an incredible...
incredible thing to happen. It's the same with work. If you think all your bosses in, and all your co-workers in all the places you've ever worked at were screwed up, no matter the company, the industry, all screwed up, then there's never any rhyme or reason to the way they are and the way they treat you. From your perspective, they're just screwed up and that's that. Maybe that's how they were born, maybe that's how you were raised, who knows? But if you zoom out, just like with relationships, and be honest about what's really going on here, you will have to come to acknowledge that the only common denominator in all those failed workplace relationships with your boss or co-workers is, once again, you. However, unlike with relationships, I won't advise you to be single work-wise because the analogy would be being unemployed. Furthermore, I strongly advise you that even if you can afford being unemployed, don't. For a few reasons, most of which I've gone through in detail in the video I've just mentioned, the what not to do uh, video, the gist of it is that it hinders getting a new job. But another reason not in that video is that without a job, you cannot practice the mega mind makeover I'm talking about. And you cannot acquire and practice the skill, I'm, the skills, plural, I'm talking about. These things are useless when only theoretical. They can only be mastered when practiced, hands-on, day in, day out, in a workplace environment. Conclusion, you have to work on fixing and improving yourself first. You have to figure out why you were passed over, truly why, then make a plan, then get the skills. And what's a better place to practice those necessary skills than your current workplace? Seriously, what have you got to lose? you already have lost all that you can all that can happen now is that you gain use this workplace as your playground free from the inhibitions that usually bind you and prevent you from pushing the envelope in regard to your navigation of office politics in other words the inhibitions that prevent you from from how much of a bad boy employee versus a good boy employee you manage or even dare to actually be. What I'm offering you, what I'm suggesting is a workplace dream come true, which is, as promised, how not to give a fuck and get promoted, but in a good way. Let me give you some examples. It will make everything crystal clear. Say you had concluded a successful project and you want to show off about it a bit, and why not? You've done a great job and you deserve the accolades. Plus, you really think others could benefit from it because you've, become, you've, you've come to be the expert on the best practices for that issue, which could save them tons of time and hassle. So, whereas up till now, you would have been hesitant to brag about your successful project. And I'm not talking about anything excessive or annoying. I'm just talking about the justified and legitimate and even needed PR that one should be able to do on behalf of oneself. So, whereas up till now you would be hesitant to brag about it because you were scared, scared of what your co-workers will say to your face or behind your back, or what they will think about you, whether they articulate it or not, now you can put all these worries aside. You can overcome them because you have already lost what you wanted, that promotion and pay raise. So what could possibly happen? Remember, you wanted to quit. You wanted to F the whole company off. So you are already at rock bottom in terms of how you feel about coming to work each and every day and giving it your all. And what I said to you was that you can have all 
that effing everybody off as if you quit, but without the actual quitting. You can always quit later, but until you do, can you see the freedom that you gain when you realize, yeah, I'm here for now, but maybe I'll be gone later on. And so I don't need to give so much weight to what they're thinking or saying about me. Plus, I've tried this strategy. It didn't work. I was a good boy employee. Where did it get me? Nowhere. The bad boy employee got the promotion. The bad girl employee got the pay raise, not me. So why even bother with binding myself and inhibiting myself and subduing myself in the case of this example of bragging tastefully about something I deserve to brag about. If I don't brag on my behalf tastefully, who will? Can I trust my co-workers to sing my praise for me? No. Can I trust my boss to sing my praise for me? No. They may or may not do it. Either way, it's out of your control. Things won't happen to you because you put them on a vision board, as we've talked about before. You have to make them happen. You have to take action. And then if somebody does something nice for you, that's great. But that's a bonus. You cannot build on that if you're serious about getting that promotion and pay raise. And what this entire snub stack is about is taking over control. And by the way, your co-workers and your boss will either, well, they will or they will not sing your praise, either because of their own personality, whether they like to root for people or not, either because they are in competition with you and they don't want to give you a leg up, or because they never heard you talk about it and they were not involved in that, in that specific project, so they don't even know it was that successful. Remember, we've talked about asserting yourself to your boss and colleagues alike. This is yet another example of where it needs to be implemented. So when you say to yourself what I have just said, speaking from your point of view, and you keep repeating it over and over to yourself in a repetitive auto-suggestion, auto as in autobiography, meaning about your own self. So when you keep auto-suggesting yourself with these notions, you set yourself free, free of all the mental and emotional and therefore also behavioral excess baggage that has been weighing on you. This is the most liberating thing you can do for yourself in the workplace. This will get you true empowerment, not the uh, overused, cheapened, prostitutionalized term HR uses, but rather the true, pure essence of it. Trust me, you would experience it to the point of intoxication. I kid you not. This is not hyperbole, which is why you need to be careful because it might get you a hangover in the form of a backlash if you take it too far, which brings us again to what I've mentioned numerous times. It's all about nuance and nuance requires sophistication and that many degrees of subtleties, which is exactly what we've been doing here in this series I call the emergency snub stack. In case of emergency, break glass. See how it all comes together? I love it when a plan comes together. And you know what the best, most beautiful irony is? This should blow your mind. All this not giving a fuck and getting promoted can only be applied in a workplace you want to quit. Let me say it again, as it is so counterintuitive, yet so crucial. 
the how not to give a fuck and get promoted can only be applied in a workplace you want to quit. Why is that? Because, well, it's like relationships again. Think about it. The more you want your partner, the less risk you're willing to take. The more careful you are not to hurt their feelings, not to say something you would later regret. You know the hefty price you'll have to pay for doing the wrong thing. Same here. The sexier, the sexier a workplace is, is, meaning more desirable, so that many people apply and want to become employees, so it has a high status in its industry and the work, workforce as a whole. So the more you want to work there, the more careful your attitude and behavior will be. You can do a thought experiment that will prove this, although I'm quite sure you already know it's true. Imagine quitting and somehow managing to find a new workplace quite soon. Surely you see how in that new place you wouldn't dare do even half of what you dare here in your current workplace. First of all, in any new place you need to prove yourself and you don't have any of the back credit you have in your current workplace. Even if that credit is mixed with ups and downs also, in the new place, you tread very mildly because you need to forge new relationships. And on top of that, you don't know how things work. You're not orientated in the most basic way. You can hardly find your way to the bathroom, bathroom, potato, potato, without getting lost in the maze of corridors, let alone know all the ropes. So now, when I say the how not to give a fuck and get a promotion can only be applied in a workplace you want to quit. It's starting to make sense, right? Let's do another example to further establish that which is sinking now into your psyche and soul, which is what I want. Say you have a conflict with a coworker. He or she is stealing the ideas that you came up with and presenting them as their own, which is one of the most infuriating things that can happen to you in a workplace. Speaking of which, specific training as to what to do in both those cases, i.e. how to promote yourself and what to do when a coworker steals your work, will be uploaded in the future. Let me know if you're interested so that I know what priority to give them. So when a coworker is stealing your ideas, whereas previously you would be extremely hesitant as to confront that person directly or at all, because you didn't want to come off as too aggressive or too possessive of your ideas instead of being a team player, or to be regarded as a jealous person or a vindictive person or whatever it was that shackled you from acting in spite of the fact that both common sense and sheer justice would suggest you absolutely should act on it. Then now, you are, now that you are already passed over and you are weighing your place in the company and you're mulling over leaving, you certainly have nothing to lose. What's the worst that could happen? We're not talking about doing something horrific that will in and of itself get you fired. You're in a not so bad shape in spite of being passed over. You are employed as they wanted, had they wanted to fire you, by now they would have. So the coast is clear for now. Of course, anything is possible always the workplace market is very dynamic. So since the coast is clear for now, why not use it to your advantage? So someone will think you're aggressive or possessive or jealous or whatever. So what? You can choose to quit anytime. I've advised against doing it right now, but not forever. You're not stuck there forever and ever. And when you do, do leave, 
you'll never see them again. So why even be bothered with what they say or think? See how thinking like this frees you? And remember, being varying degrees of a doormat or a spineless good boy employee as you were before didn't exactly, exactly get you any extra credit, at least not with your boss whom decided to snub you in that promotion and pay raise. And that, my friend, suggests you didn't have that much credit, not only with your boss, but with your co-workers as well. How do I know? Because bosses are very much influenced implicitly and explicitly, consciously and subconsciously by the vibe they get about you from the team to which they add their own direct observations of you as they see you handle different situations. Maybe your boss saw you take it in the gut silently in all sorts of, situ of circumstances where you should have asserted yourself instead and maybe that's what made him or her decide against you for that promotion and pay raise. You never know. It is absolutely possible and I've seen it happen. Food for thought, isn't it? So self-shackling, self-inhibiting, self-subduing are all forms of manifestations of examples of being a good boy employee, thus a sure way to undermine your potential for getting that coveted promotion and pay raise. And each time you didn't directly confront anyone at work who deserved it, who deserved it, you regressed a step. You regressed a square on the Monopoly game board we all play on. And by confronting, I'm not talking about having a fist fight, of course not. I'm talking about effective verbal confrontation of standing your ground. If you'd like a video about how to do that exactly, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to make it. But if you think leaving is on the table for you, then you are in control of the situation and you can decide to up the ante and play a higher risk game for a higher reward. Potentially, no one can guarantee anything in life. When you decide to play a higher risk game for a higher reward, potentially, you can then confront your co-worker when deserved. You can then assert yourself to your boss when needed, respectfully, of course. You can set boundaries to an unreasonable client and you can tell off a vendor that did not deliver with all the respect to respect, of course. You can do all that when you switch from a, what will they say or what will happen? So operating in the mindset of fear to, I don't give a fuck. I'm leaving anyway, potentially sometime. So I might as well do X, Y, Z. Or what is there to be afraid of? The worst already happened. I was snubbed. So treading extra mildly with everybody around me didn't pay off. On the contrary, this is the thing that screwed me up. So I might as well go the opposite way. Remember George Costanza and the opposite episode? So like that. See how we're coming full circle, right, left and center here? If you don't know what I mean, check out um, the What Not To Do Masterclass right here. If you keep failing at something, anything, do everything opposite than what you've done before. I'm using opposite figuratively. It should be different and different sometimes is the opposite of what you did before. And sometimes it's not a full 180, but a 30 or 90 or whatever degree different than before, as long as you're not repeating that which has already failed you, which would be really stupid and counterproductive. 
What I've just described is a high wire game. But you, my friend, are off the wire altogether. You are too cemented to the ground. You have no game. Now you can have. I've given you the tools for how to understand the game and how to play it. Indeed, playing a higher risk game for a potential higher reward is what business is all about. And you are a part of it, even as a salaried employee rather than a business owner. So now that you understand the game better than you ever had, will you play it? It's up to you. I did my part. To sum this whole snub stack up, the counterintuitive reality is that the best way to break free from your good boy employee shackles is to stay put in the very workplace that has shackled you position-wise and salary-wise by not giving you that promotion and pay raise. How so? Because these are two different kinds of shackles and you need to understand how they interplay with one another to get your way. There are the physical shackles of your position and purse and there are the mental shackles of your mindset and mode. How about both those alliterations, huh? The shackles of your position and purse are manifested by you being passed over for that promotion and pay raise you wanted. Thus, by being snubbed, you have been shackled to your current position in the hierarchy, your current rung on the organizational ladder. The shackles of your mindset and mode are manifested by you choosing to be a good boy employee, either because you thought it will get you what you wanted or because it's part of your character and inhibitions. Either way, it did not work. It caused the exact opposite of what you wanted. And both those shackles interplay is thus. The physical shackling, either, uh, i.e. being passed over, can be blamed to the largest degree on your self-inflicted mental shackling, i.e. your choice to be a good boy employee. And as we saw, there is a way out of this conundrum, but let me now add, it comes with a crucial caveat. It only works if you were indeed deserving of that promotion and pay raise you didn't get. And you being truly deserving is the premise of this whole snub stack. Because if not, that's a whole other ball game. Everything I said is based on the assumption of you not getting your due. So what's the way out of this conundrum? Break free from the shackles that are in your control, which are your mental shackles. And that will free you not to give a fuck and still get promoted, but in a good way, which is the way I have meticulously described throughout this six-part series. The first installment being what not to do after being passed over, and then the five parts of what to do, of which this is the last one. In other words, and here we come full circle once again, unlike the first installment where I dissuaded you for, from trying to pull a George Costanza by quitting in a fury, thinking that you can then come back as if nothing has happened, remember that? Here, I give you full license to go all in and do a complete George Costanza opposite. Break yourself free from your mental shackles of mindset and mode by going full bad boy employee on your boss and co-workers. Mind you, only in the way I've described it. Don't go crazy on me now. 
And with time, your boss will have to free you from your physical shackles of position and purse by finally granting you the promotion and pay raise you so deserve. So don't give a fuck and get promoted. I think this qualifies as going out with a bang as promised, don't you? Some final words of encouragement. I know it seems daunting. The road ahead is treacherous and tricky, but you will get there and I'll be here all the way to see you through it and give you all the additional tools you need. We'll go through this together. You have my word. Okay, I'm done. Now it's your turn. I'm dying to hear what you think about everything we've talked about. What are you already implementing? What more do you need? And if you want more of these in-depth pay raise and promotion skills coming, you know the drill. But knowing isn't enough. You have to actually do it or this whole thing is doomed. So subscribe, hit the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. And now go back to work. I can't get you that pay raise or promotion if you don't actually do the job.